Hi everyone, this is Brad Rao from BradRaoMusic.com. I'm really excited to make this video today. Um, this is going to be some really deep concepts in music. This is going to help your understanding of theory. It's going to help your understanding of form. It's going to help your memory. It's going to help your interpretation. And it's just going to really open up your eyes to the way that music is formed and how um, not necessarily that music is a language, but that people have created a language out of music and that there are certain tendencies that are going to take place. But I'd like to start with a little parable, a story about a great mystic who wandered to, a, uh, to learn Buddhism in a Buddhist temple in Ceylon. And while he was there, he found uh, this exercise. And the exercise is a very simple exercise. All you have to do is sit there and think about all of the reasons why you are doing that exact exercise at that exact moment in time. And you don't want to get metaphysical. You want to just get very scientific answers. For example, one time you, you might be doing this exercise because of YouTube. Because if YouTube didn't exist, you wouldn't be hearing about me doing this exercise. You wouldn't be doing this exercise if it wasn't for cars. You wouldn't be doing this exercise if it wasn't for the Big Bang. I wouldn't be doing this exercise if my sister didn't get a TV for Christmas um, when she was in junior high or high school and that the reason for that is because by having a second TV I was able to watch something different than my parents which is the first time I saw a classical guitar player on TV which led me to a long chain of events which led me here today teaching you this exact lesson so if that little thing didn't happen it's a very interesting exercise and I, I, I'm supposed that by doing it enough you find the mystical connection with your universe and the place you have within the universe or something to that extent. I'm not here to teach you about Buddhism. I'm certainly not here to uh, teach you enlightenment, maybe not today at least, um, but we are going to be looking at music. Um, and while I'm talking here, you might be wondering why I have a single score here with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight measures, and there is a single note here, which is a C sharp, which is on the and of beat two of the third measure. And what we're going to look at here, we're going to play a little game. Um, and there's going to be a couple rules of the game. What we're going to do is we're going to try to compose the rest of this melody, <clears throat> given the fact that there is only a single C sharp. And we're going to kind of look at how that note being in this particular place as opposed to anywhere else on the beat or any other note is going to really shape the the entire rest of these measures here and we're going to you, you know there's again there's going to be a couple of rules to the game first of all we're going to be writing in a classical style and when i say a uh, classical style I, I actually kind of mean more of a broke style broke classical and of course when i say broke i'm kind of mean box so it's going to be yeah deal with it it's a box style you, if you know me you know this is going to we're going to be i focus a lot on bach not to say that there are other non bach composers that have written great music throughout the years so this c sharp being exactly where it is so we're going to kind of we're going to use the axiom that we're going to be writing in a certain style um, if this was an exercise in jazz we could look at i think we would get very different answers um, and then we're going to kind of look at like what's going to happen. Now, the first question is what key is this in? And we're looking at the key signature here. We have the B flat, which usually means that it's in the key of F or it is in the key of D minor. And I am going to guess that it's going to be in the key of D minor because if we were in the key of C, we wouldn't want to have, or if we were in the key of F, we would not want to have the dominant, the fifth, the C as a sharp. That would be a really weak thing to do to establish in the beginning of a piece of music is to have a really weak dominant on the fifth be sharped even though it is on an offbeat. So this is going to lead me to, be, to think that it would be in D minor, in which case this would really make a lot of sense. A C sharp is the leading tone in D minor. This C sharp also comes on a weak beat. Um, the C sharp is also an eighth note. So this really tells us a lot about what the rest of the melody is probably going to be like. It's probably going to start very low, on a low D. I don't imagine it really going from up high. Usually this range on a guitar would be a weaker point on guitar. Most pieces wouldn't start in a higher range. So we'd probably start at the lower range and then work our way up to the C sharp. Now I think it's kind of obvious that let's just at least add this in here. So we're going to take the next note here is going to be a D. C sharp going to D. 
I think that that's pretty obvious for us. Um, so what we're going to look at now is um, how how the rest of this is going to kind of fit together. Now we also kind of I think that we want to probably start on a D. Now again, this isn't the idea isn't that every piece of music that has a C sharp in the third measure on the and of two is going to be composed the same, but we are going to see that there are certain tendencies. Because that note is here, it kind of affects the beginning of the piece. And I'm going to, I'm going to start with a quarter note on D, but that's also going to make me... I'm going to just uh, turn this volume up here. Um, that's also going to make me want to add some eighth notes later. If these are if they're eighth notes, it would be really weird to have just quarter notes going up, and then suddenly there's eighth notes in measures three when there were no eighth notes in the first and second measure. That would be a little bit weird. So I'm gonna, I could start with eighth notes, or I'm gonna have a quarter note and then moving into some eighth notes here, um, and doing something kind of like this. Now you obviously can notice that I can't just climb right up. I'm gonna have to kind of dance around. Um, some of these notes. Um, so I might end up doing something along the lines of this and using a melodic sequence taking me to the fifth on the second beat here. Okay, so we can kind of see that I'm working my, I worked my way up slowly from D to A and I can continue working up from the D. And it also kind of lets me know what the melodic curve is. And I'm assuming since we're in a classical style that the first thing is going to be four measures long. So I'm really going to zoom into this fourth measures. Um, let's look at how it ends. Now if I continue this eighth note motion going up, um, that's going to take me up to a high A, and that's going to create a whole linear melody that's going to go up in one direction. And I think it's going to be a little bit more interesting if we can have the, the music kind of curving up here, maybe reaching a peak around here. We'll have to th reconsider that. I think I actually want this to be the peak a little bit earlier. So we have this sweeping up and then coming down like this. Now notice that I ended here on a D. I have the D here and I have the D here. And that's kind of because I don't want to, I probably, it looks like I'm going to end this phrase on some kind of dominant notes, which would of course be in the key of D minor. We have an A, C sharp, and E. So I'm going to just kind of add some of those notes in here something like this and then closing off this phrase with a nice long kind of thing here and then we kind of have an upward curve now if we don't have enough of a downward curve we can move this note down an octave and I think that might give us a little bit of a curve and I might reconsider this later but we can kind of see that by having this having this note here it really um, sets up the rest of the, what's going to happen within the song. It ends up ending up being that I have the, the tonic chord here and then the dominant chord moving moving on the last measure, kind of giving me a half cadence. So because I have to sort of get to the tonic early, it kind of, you know... Now I could have also interpreted this whole measure as dominant, but I think that that's a long... That's four beats of just having the same chord, and it doesn't really create enough motion, I think. Um, so anyway, you know, th this having this C sharp on this beat has been very significant for the way that the rest of the note. You could imagine that if this note was even different. Imagine if this C sharp was one beat over here. Imagine that this note was actually the C sharp. That would kind of make the this whole part a dominant, and it would kind of force me to have a tonic chord here. Um, and having a perfect cadence instead of a half cadence. So just by having this note on an and, it kind of really sets it up to move up here. It, it would have completely changed that. If this note was, imagine for a second that this was a B flat, um, the B flat would probably pull down to A, and the peak of the melody might end up being somewhere around here, where because it was a C sharp, pulling us up already in in the higher register of the staff it kind of forces us to have some kind of peak somewhere over here I'm not saying that it would be exactly like this it could be changed around a little bit but it really does kind of predict the flow 
of the music. We're going to kind of look here. So now that we, you know, we have to get from here to here, um, and then, you know, we want to kind of think about how to do that. Um, I want to try to get some different harmonies going on here. We have kind of a one, two, four. That could be another another one chord. So I think I want to have, um, you know, the, the other question is what note is going to come before this? And I really think that there are two answers. One of them would be to have the D, which I think is probably the obvious answer and the, probably the one that I think I want to do. But the other answer would be to have a B natural and have it be some kind of melodic minor kind of thing. Um, why don't we go with the melodic minor, actually? Maybe this is a quarter note, because again, we have quarter notes and eighth notes, so I want to have some quarter notes here. I think that that note here is going to be a little bit too low. Um, we're going to have, I'm going to have to rethink that. Um, I might do something like that. So now I have, I'm just, now basically I'm prolonging the dominant note. Um, I want to kind of give this a dominant flavor. So I'm going to kind of have, uh, I want to have some eighth notes in here actually. So I'm going to make that an eighth note. Giving it sort of a dominant kind of feel. And then, um, so that pretty much composes the first four measures. Um, now we have four more measures to go, and again, just by having having this C sharp where it is, it kind of predicts the way the melody is going to move, and it's also going to predict the way that the next the next melody the next four melodies are going to move. Because what I, what it ends up happening now is because now that I have this kind of thing, I can copy and paste it, except this time I'm going to end on a tonic chord. Ah, what am I doing here? Okay, so we have something kind of like this, and now this, and then for here we're going to have to kind of get, <coughs> get to the dominant note a little bit earlier. So I'm going to have to change the, the part that links into that, and I might do something like that. And then I have kind of a, uh, is that a period, or I don't even remember those old terms, um, but, so I have kind of a four measures going to a half cadence, starting the same, but then ending different on a tonic chord. And that all came, all of this music came, because this C sharp was here. Now, if I were to replace that C sharp with a rest, um, or even just to to do that, um, and if I were to ask you what note do you think is missing within this context, I think that it would be pretty obvious that the note would have to be a C sharp in in this kind of style. So here's the melody that we get. I guess we might as well listen to it. Something like that. Um, I would touch it up a little bit more. And I don't, you know, again, this isn't a composing, you know, of course, I think you could learn something about composing. But the point here is that, I, you know, people ask me, how do I remember that note? How do you remember that there's a C sharp? in the third measure on the eighth note of the second beat. And the question that I would ask is, how could you possibly not know that? If that note, how could you not, um, how could that note be anything different? How could any of these notes be any different than exactly what they are? And that's the thing that 
when you're looking at music, you know, each note is usually picked for a reason, and you have to be able to understand that. That's going to help your interpretation. That's going to help you be able to remember, remember music. It's definitely going to help your theory, um, and it's just going to make you an overall better musician. So I hope that this was interesting for some people. I hope you got some things out of this. Um, I think this is very interesting, and I hope to maybe elaborate on this more on some new, more videos. So let me know if you enjoyed this. Give me some comments. Please subscribe, and thanks for listening.